Hi, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash, and today I'm going to talk to you about sweater surgery. I have a sweater that I knit in 2014 that I love for a lot of different reasons. It's warm, it's made partially out of cashmere, uh, it has some nice details like a shawl collar and some really great seed stitch around the cuffs and bottom band of the sweater. But the problem with this sweater has always been the length of it. When I did all the measurements, this was the second sweater I made and I didn't quite make it long enough. I didn't quite trust myself. So today in this video, I wanna show you how to lengthen your sweater. It's a pretty simple process. I didn't invent the technique. Uh, Carol Feller talks about uh, one technique for this in her sweater surgery class. And Natography has just recently on her podcast uh, shortened one of her sweaters using a very similar technique. Um, luckily for me, I have Melissa of 2014 who saved a nice ball of the same yarn that the sweater is knit in. So I have plenty of yarn to work with to lengthen the sweater. And I also have a small um, circular swatch knit in the round that I can practice the technique on before I get to the actual sweater. Something that I would recommend to anyone doing any kind of surgery on a sweater. Practice first. So in this video what you'll see me do is I'm going to open up this sweater. I'm going to snip a single stitch somewhere around the midpoint where there isn't any shaping and I'm going to keep the two uh, sets of stitches that uh, result and live stitches to keep them alive. I'm going to knit up to add some extra length because this is a bottom-up sweater uh, and then I will graft the two sets of live stitches back together using Kitchener stitch and hopefully my tension will be good enough that you won't even be able to see the modification that I've made. Now in the process uh, of pulling this sweater out I also noticed that it has a couple little holes in it from snags in my closet and I'm going to also fix those holes uh, using a slightly different technique. So to begin this process we're going to need some tools. Um, I like to have an extra double pointed needle around just to be able to pull the yarn through and things like that. Um, since I'm doing a sweater with a large body I need to have my needles with a long cord attached. Uh, I need to have a sharp pair of scissors and I need to do a little bit of thinking. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I need to work between my two uh, increases here. So this is a bottom-up sweater and you can see there's an increase here and there's an increase here. And so I don't want to get anywhere near either of those increases. So I'm going to try to go kind of right in the middle of them to find a stitch that isn't going to be affected. And so what I'm going to do is cut just one leg of this stitch and start unraveling. And you'll see that since this is a 100% wool sweater, this, the live stitches should just stick around and, and hang on to themselves there a little bit. And I'm actually going to do it. Okay, first stitch has been snipped and you can see it leaves a hole. It looks a little scary, nothing to be afraid of. So we just switched over the camera perspective so that you'd have the view that I have as the knitter doing this work. So I just snipped the one leg of that stitch and released it. This is my first live stitch. You'll see it's just sitting there, hanging out. And we're going to use this little tail end here and we're going to keep unworking it from the sweater. And you're just going to do this really gently, just pulling it out. Going along. This is what we snipped, one end of what we snipped. We've got a live stitch here, and a live stitch here, and a live stitch down here. And that's fine. They'll hang out, just, just hang out right there. We don't need to really do anything with them for quite some time if we don't want to. If you're really worried, you can grab them with your needle. Um, and you just keep unwinding gently so that you're not tugging on these stitches. And you could use a needle for those or anything else. So now you see we have three live stitches up top. See those hanging out there? and two live stitches on the bottom. And everything's just fine. The sweater's just fine. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep unraveling all the way around until I completely detach the bottom portion of my sweater. I'm then gonna go in and pick up each of my live stitches on the top and on the bottom, just like this. Get them on the needle. It's a little hard because I'm doing it one-handed in front of the camera here. Get them on the needle like that, and then I'll have one set of live stitches at the bottom of the sweater, and one set of live stitches at the top of this bottom band.
of little um, tips along the way. As you can see, I've already made quite a sizable uh, hole in my sweater. Uh, I'm using two different colored cords to keep myself, uh, you know, organized here. And I find that as I'm uh, picking up stitches with the cords, uh, it when I stop picking up the stitches and go on to, to open up more, I do find that sticking a little double pointed needle in these first couple of stitches just holds everything nicely. Uh, there's a chance that these two have the most pressure on them and they could unravel. This just holds them fine until I'm ready to go. The other thing is, uh, when this uh, bit of yarn that I'm pulling out gets too long, it means that you're pulling it all the way, all of this length through those stitches. So as you'll see, I've got a little pile here and I'm just keeping that very, very short so that as I go along and pull out stitches, all I'm having to pull through those stitches is a tiny amount of uh, yarn. Just makes the whole process a little bit easier. of hours of pulling out stitches. The sweater now has no bottom, <laughs> one could say. Uh, the bottom stitches are all live and they're being held on one set of interchangeable cords. And I've marked the uh, final stitch on this and on the bottom band, I've marked the final stitch so that when I try to line them back up, I'll know which part goes where, basically. The bottom band, as you can see, is also separated and it's also on an interchangeable cord and I have my size 5 needles in here uh, ready to knit upwards to add a couple inches to the sweater um, and I spliced my ball of yarn back on and I so all I'm gonna do now is just do a simple stockinette knit up for a couple of extra inches and then we'll do the grafting We're on to the next step in our sweater surgery process. Uh, we've separated the two parts of the sweater and I spent uh, the last day or so knitting up the extra inches that I needed on the bottom. So now all that's left is to graft this bottom back onto the main body of the sweater. Uh, and so I'm gonna uh, bring the camera in in a minute, but I'm gonna basically tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, I have both uh, sets of stitches on uh, my long, cords for my interchangeables to make sure that uh, nothing falls off the end that I'm not working on. I put a really big fat size 13 needle on the end of this one and the same with this one just to protect my stitches so they won't go anywhere. Uh, I have my two size 5 needles attached to the other side of my cords so that I can work them uh, together to do a Kitchener stitch graft which I will now show you. Okay, so your view is now from behind me over my shoulder so you can see what I'm doing. I have a long uh, piece of uh, yarn here that I'm going to use for my Kitchener stitch. Uh, and I'm starting my Kitchener stitch. You remember that I uh, marked the one stitch I wanted to use here on the edge or the side of the sweater because that way when I come back around to finish the Kitchener stitch, if there's any kind of discrepancy, it'll be on the side of the sweater and be much less noticeable than if I did it right in the middle at the front. This is just going to work like a basic Kitchener stitch that you would do at the end of a sock. Uh, and so to set that up, my yarn is in the back. I'm going to come through and purl the first stitch. And I have to get all my yarn through there, so this will be the most difficult part. And then I'm going to go ahead and knit through that back stitch. This is just the setup for a Kitchener. Okay. And the thing with this Kitchener stitch, uh, unlike a sock, well, like a sock, to a certain extent. You're gonna have to make sure that your tension is good all the way through because you wanna basically mimic the same stitches that you have on the body of the sweater in your Kitchener. So you have to make sure you're not pulling too tight. Okay. So to begin the, ki the uh, Kitchener after you do the setup, same as any other time you do Kitchener, you're gonna knit into the first stitch, slip it off, pull our long piece of yarn through, 
You're going to purl into that next stitch. And then you're going to purl into this back stitch, slipping it off the needle. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a tug just to kind of get it a little closer there. And then the last step of Kitchener is to knit into that back stitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna give us a quick look at what our first stitch looks like. It's not gonna look like too much at this point. And we're just gonna let it hang there um, and be a little bit loose for now until we get about mm, two or three stitches finished and then we can check our tension and adjust if we need to both with our uh, needle pulling out little bits of um, to loosen it or we can pull on this end just a little bit to tighten it. So I'm going to keep going on my Kitchener and I'll check back in with you once I'm a little bit further along. Okay, so we're at the end of the process here and we're going to, I'm going to have to mess around with that just a little bit. But what I'm going to do is uh, weave in my end here and close up this tiny little gap that's still here. So we're at the end of our sweater surgery journey here and I have for you the completed uh, sweater that's been altered. Um, this sweater end, used to end here um, with the band and uh, we removed the band and added about two inches of length to it and then sutured the band back on so you can see how that looks. Um, one thing that uh, I will note is that the yarn that I had that was the same uh, color lot or the same color way uh, actually ended up being a different color lot so uh, to to deal with that, I kind of went with some uh, striping here. One, uh, I did one round with the original color that I pulled out of a swatch and one round with the uh, ball of color that was a slightly different color lot. So it has a little variation at the bottom, but I think that actually looks fine with the design of the sweater, given all the different elements. Uh, and then the other thing uh, we did in this uh, sweater surgery is to patch a couple of holes in the sweater. So there's a hole up here that's been patched and actually a hole right here along the bust line that's been patched. Um, and really it's hard to, to tell that those patches are there. So I'm pretty happy with my sweater surgery and I hope that this video helps anyone else who has a sweater in their closet that they just don't like very much. Um, helps you to kind of pull it out, refresh it, make the changes to it, make the alterations and don't be afraid of cutting into your knitting or pulling it apart and putting it back together the way that you want it to fit. So I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash. Thanks for joining me and uh, happy knitting. I'll see you next time.